The collision model is the most important part when it comes to your model interacting with the world. It can be convex or concave. Convex models have no indents or holes, like a football. Concave models, on the other hand, do have indents and holes, like an hourglass or a literal cave on a mountainside. In Source Engine games, you get two types of collision detection. The basic collision model, for props with a single bone, and collision joints for models with multiple bones which need per bone collision, like a ragdoll. I have split this video into two parts. The first half is basic convex and concave collision models for your average prop. The second half is all about collision joints, for your animated model that need per bone collision. The description has usable timestamps, which you can use to skip to the collision joints part immediately if you so desire. Let's begin with the basic concave collision model. The convex collision model follows the exact same principles, except that you will only use one single piece of mesh, whereas concave uses multiple. So I will not specifically cover convex. First, Duplicate the prop and delete all vertices. That way, you keep the vertex group and the armature parenting. Create a very rough outline of your model. Don't bother about any small details. Only include larger detail where having something else clip through it would be a serious issue. You may have up to 32 separate pieces. Even though this model will be concave, you must build it by using only convex pieces. After making the mesh, you need it to be smooth shaded. You can do this by selecting all vertices by pressing the A key, then press Ctrl and F. This brings up a menu in which you must select Shade Smooth. Also make sure that the mesh does not have any edge split modifiers. Now the model itself is done. Export it with a sensical name. I like to add the underscore PHY suffix to the prop name to tell them apart. After exporting the mesh, open up the QC file. At the very bottom you will have the collision model section. If you do not yet have one, just copy the basic ones that you can see on the screen. Right behind the command is the name of the SMD or DMX file you just made for the collision. Inside the brackets we have the option to change weight in kilograms and the concave setting, along with some other settings which I rarely use. I'll put a link to the collision model page of the Valve developer wiki in the description below, so you may read up on the other commands for collision models if you wanted. Once you set up the collision model part with your SMD file and the weight you want, you can go ahead and compile it. In HLMV you can turn on the physics model option to see your collision model at work. And that covers the basic collision model already. Now onto the collision joints, aka ragdoll and dynamic prop collision. Just like the concave collision mesh, duplicate the model and begin to build a very rough outline of the model. Only include larger detail where having something else clip through it would be a serious issue. You may use up to 32 separate pieces. You may also use multiple pieces per bone. After you build a rough version of your model, you can begin rigging this collision mesh to all the bones they should belong to. In the end, every piece should be rigged to only one single bone. After rigging this collision mesh, you can export it and open up the QC file. For now, the only difference here will be that the command is called collision joints. Instead of the concave setting, we got a concave per joint. 
after you are done changing the QC file, compile the model. If you want to use this rigged collision mesh on a dynamic prop like this animated arm, you don't have to do anything else. But if you want to use this knowledge to build a ragdoll, you will need to tell the game just how far each of those bones is allowed to rotate. For example, the human knee is not supposed to bend forwards or sideways. This bendy setting is part of the collision mesh and can be generated using HLMV. After you compiled your model, open the model in HLMV and head to the Physics tab. You got a drop down menu in which you can select a bone you want to set its rotation limits, along with some sliders to set and test those limits. Select a bone you'd like to adjust. Move either the min or max slider to one direction, but not both at once, since setting the slider back to zero will be hard. Fortunately, if you leave one of the sliders at zero, the other slider can be returned all the way to the center since it is not able to move past the other slider. Just a little tip from me. Anyhow, move one slider to one side and then move the test slider. You can see that my mesh is rotating the wrong way, so I will reset the sliders to zero and pick another axis to rotate around and try again. If you put your test slider to the far right position, you can see the maximum amount of rotation it can get. Likewise, putting the test slider to the far left will show the minimum amount of rotation, or rather the maximum in the other direction. But since the physics system in Source Engine is a bit wonky, it will usually rotate about 2 or 3 degrees more, so keep that in mind. If you set up the minimum and maximum amounts the way you want for one bone, you can just move on to another bone. The information you just made will be saved in HLMV for as long as the software is opened. Go through all the bones and pick your movement ranges. Once you've finished setting up the ranges for all bones, click the Generate QC button. This will copy a bunch of text to your clipboard, just as if you had copied text from a website or a text file. You can then open the QC file you had just used earlier and paste all those lines you had just generated in HLMV. You will get a new block of collision joints with a bunch of joint constraint lines. At the very bottom also sits a new ragdoll sequence, which will use a default sequence name you probably don't have. What you need to do now is to change the mesh SMD name of that pasted block of text, as it still uses the ragdoll SMD name by default. You also need to paste the concave per joint command if you had used it. You can now delete the previous basic collision joints section. Since we got a new ragdoll sequence with the ragdoll activity at the bottom of that collision joint section, I will delete my own sequence I already had and update the ragdoll sequence HLMV gave me. By the way, sometimes ragdolls can freak out if you have a rotation limit of zero on all the axes. So I'll remedy this by setting all fully zero limits to 0.05. You might not need to do it, but I'd like to play it safe, since I had a ragdoll fly across the map before, thanks to the buggy physics engine we got. Once all this editing of lines in the QC file is done, you can finally compile your ragdoll and admire it in game or go chase after it if the game decides to send it flying. Have fun!